Merry Christmas to you from Christ Church of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. My name is Edward Good. I'm pastor of this congregation and I welcome you to this time. I'm so grateful that you've taken some time on this Christmas day to center in on the story of this day that we celebrate. And so wherever you are, we embrace you. Our guiding statement as a congregation is that we embrace all as we journey the way of Jesus. And so in this part of your journey today, we embrace you and are grateful that you are here today. Today's service is going to be pretty simple. I have a reflection that I'll be sharing from John chapter 1. We have some music from uh, just some amazing musicians that we'll share. And we're going to talk about a gift that... Uh, Many of you, if you were in our in-person service, received. And if you were not in person, we can get one to you. Um, or you, everything in there is stuff you can kind of do, for the most part, on your own as well. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But for right now, let us start. As we center ourselves, let us pray. God with us, we open our hearts and souls to the beauty of your kingdom. We seek to hear the precious news once again that we might be continually renewed transformed and awed by your abundant love, your everlasting peace, your miraculous hope, and your quenchless joy. May our praise and prayers be pleasing to you, and may our lives reflect the beauty you have birthed in us. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night. scripture reading for today it comes from the beginning of the gospel of John. We'll be reading uh, the first 13 verses of John chapter 1. And as I go through the passage, I'm going to be sharing with this. So kind of the message is integrated, kind of tied in with the words of scripture. So you'll, that'll make sense as we go through it. And so let us hear God's word for us today. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through the Word, and without the Word, not one thing came into being. And so we start, actually, with this big bag. This is a gift that, uh, again, if you were in, the, in our in-person service on Sunday, you received this as you were leaving uh, one of our services yesterday. It's a gift from our congregation's green team. It's a new ministry that uh, we started this year, focusing on creation care, both within our congregation, but also reaching out to our community as well, as we've provided a place for people to bring recycling that our uh, local uh, garbage company doesn't take, and we take instead to a recycling center here in the Cincinnati area. And so this is a reusable bag for you to take at the, to take to the grocery store, any other store. Um, it's not a lot, but it is something. It is an act that for, you know, using this bag, it's one less plastic bag that might be going into a landfill. And inside, there's a little note from our green team that goes through some of the things 
that if you are in the area here that you can bring to the church to recycle that might not otherwise just end up in a landfill. And so we start with that in these first few words from John chapter 1, not because we want to just advertise about the green team, but because this is a message about creation. Now, it's a different story than what you read about in Genesis. It doesn't talk about the animals and the trees and the land and the water and all that, but it is a creation story nonetheless because it talks about how Jesus, this the word is who's referred to here, has been a part of all of this since before the beginning, <laughs> that all things came into being through Jesus, that Jesus was a part of the creation from the very beginning. Now, we don't totally understand how all that came to be. We've got a lot that we understand about it, but there's a lot that we don't. But what we trust is that God was in through all of it. And as we read in Genesis, that all of this was created and God looked at it and said, this is so very good. And that God gave that to humanity to tend and to care and to steward and to nurture. And so we start today with a sense kind of looking back on that creation and looking back on remembering our responsibility to it. And so this is the first part of the gift is this bag and the note inside that talks about the ways that we can care for this gift that God has given to us. But the reading goes on. And so what came into being in the word in Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And so the, other, the next thing you'll find in your bag, find it down here, it's just a simple candle. And if you were not able to be in our in-person service, just pause this for a minute and go and find a candle that you've got. Or just imagine that you've got a candle with you. It's a simple candle. But it's a reminder of this light that we read about here, that we... Remember in this holy season, I mean, so much of this Advent season, light is a part of it. In the story of the birth of Jesus, you have the light of the star that guided the Magi to the birth of Jesus. You have the, the light that uh, the angels that, that lit up the night sky before the shepherds. There's the light that revealed itself to Mary and to Joseph and who they were going to be. And you have here this message about this light that has come into the world to guide us, to lead us, especially in times and in places that we don't quite understand. And so if this was a gift of looking back, the candle here is about the present. What's going on right now? And that for you, you might be in a time where you need that light to shine. Where you're waiting to see where God is at. And so this candle is a prayer. It's a prayer of God, meet me right here and right now. And so we continue. The word was in the world. The world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, and gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of humanity, but of God. And so if this was looking back and this candle was looking to the present, the next thing you'll find in the bag or the next thing you just simply need to gather is something about looking ahead. So in our bag, we've got an envelope and a few sheets of paper. The envelope is stamped. 
It's got an address spot or, you know, already addressed to the church. All you need to do is fill in your return address. Please write it neatly so we can read it. And in a few minutes, as you hear some beautiful music by our guitarist here at Christ Church named Max Geis, I'm going to ask you to reflect upon how you desire to see God at work. Because this last part of this John reading really feels like it's looking about the, the work of God going forward in people's lives, both in this life and in the life to come. And so I want to encourage you, and we put four pieces of paper in each, and if you need more than that, maybe just tear one in half or something like that, and simply to write on there, each person in your family, to write a commitment that you want to make, a prayer that you have, something that you long to see God at work, and write that, fold that up, put it in the envelope, and drop it in the mail. It's going to come to me here at the church. I'm not going to open it up. This is between you and God. But I'm going to hold on to those. And then when we come to next December, I'm going to drop each of, those, each of these envelopes into another envelope and mail it back to you. And so it may be something where you're wanting to, to make a new commitment in your faith life. To go in deeper in some way. And so it's a prayer that you want to go deeper, but be sure that you add something of, of how you want to try to do that. Or maybe you simply want to feel better about yourself, your body that God has given to you, that God has created and given to you. You have a commitment that you want to make about that, and you're lifting that up to God. Maybe it's something you long to see happen in the world. And so praying for peace that takes place, but don't only do that, but maybe what is the commitment that you want to make, the, the, the commitment that you can do to help further peace in the world? So whatever it might be. As Max plays in just a few moments, you're going to see some images of, of nativity scenes that folks from our uh, community have sent in. But use this time to write those prayerfully down. Again, make sure you put in your return address, Drop it in the mail, and you'll see that back to you about a year from now. And so these are our gift to you on this Christmas day. So take this time now to write those things out.
So as we close today, I'm going to offer a benediction. We'll have a little bit of music, and then right after that, for those who were not able to be here in person a couple of Sundays ago, be sharing the video of our children's Christmas program that we did on the third Sunday of Advent. This is a little extra gift for you today. But receive this benediction. These words written called The Work of Christmas by theologian and mystic and activist named Howard Thurman. Let this be a blessing for you this day. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, and when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost and to heal the broken, to feed the hungry and to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. And so go in hope and in peace and in love and in joy to spread the beauty of Christmas. Amen.